Welcome to the channel, folks. Plunkers and Classics. Uh, just finishing up the uh, 94 step side painted in the last video. If you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and watch it. I just put a rear bumper on it. And we're going to take it for a ride and see if the transmission shifts. Let's see how it rides. Tires are real crappy on it, so I'm not ex and big and big tread, so I'm not expecting it to uh, ride very good. But we're just going to take it down the down the road a little bit. Then we see if the transmission works, and then we're going to take some pictures of it, put it up for sale. So, I'll, I'll be back when we're on the road. Okay, guys. It shifted. First to second. Steering wheel's way off. You know, it's originally a 4x4. Four four. It's got the straight axle on it. Uh, driving okay. It's not uh, banging around or nothing. Window a little bit. Yeah, it needs you know needs new tires and probably gonna need an alignment. But these tires are so bad it could be throwing the alignment off. It really needs to be uh, driven a few tanks of gas in it to uh, get all that old crap out of there. But no, it runs really good. Just that it hasn't been on the road in like six years. Give it some gas. on that dash when it went over the railroad tracks but man the suspension and everything seems really good on it yeah we're gonna get to uh, the work on the nomad uh, when we come back but I just figure I'd give you guys an update on uh, how this thing runs and drives It's not worth going all the way with new tires and stuff like that. Turn around in here. Reverse works. Off pretty good. Oh, that's a glove box lid. Yeah, it won't make it won't take too much to make this a real nice truck, but I'm just not willing to put another, you know, thousand or two into it. Somebody will get a good deal on it. Okay guys, well, we know it runs, drives, shifts, stops, all that stuff. What more do you want from a cheap truck? Okay, so uh, I just, just posted the new, the last video of painting the truck. So I don't know if anybody's commented on wanting to buy it, but I'm fixing to put it up for sale. And uh, we'll see what happens. Probably 3500 plus trade. So, okay, when I come back, we'll get the uh, Nomad on the slab. And we'll uh, 
we'll get to working on it. We'll go over it, what we're going to do to it. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Got the Nomad up on the ramps. Okay, so it's built. It drove across the United States, 2,600 miles, hot rod power tour. It's done, but I guess I'll call this the second phase. And it's got a lot of new parts on it. All new suspension, disc brake conversion, all new steering stuff. On the back end, we did the new upper control trailing arms, uh, new shocks, new seals in the rear end, new coil springs. But it's not finished as far as its optimal optimal performance. So this is uh, phase two performance upgrades. So this video we're going to do, finish off the rear suspension. So when I try to do a burnout, it's got a lot of wheel hop. And uh, so I know this probably won't cure that completely, but what we're going to put on it, this is the first thing I got, and bring this out. Now, this is not sponsored content at all, okay? I had to buy this. This is uh, UMI. I give you all these little stickers and stuff. Uh, now, I'm not sure if UMI, I don't know if it says it on there, whether it's US made, USA made, but it is a name brand, I believe. And when I was looking for, this is the rear sway bar. When I was looking for this rear sway bar, this was the cheapest one on eBay. Okay. Now, this is for 64 to 72 Chevelle and for all A bodies, which are uh, my 70 Le Mans. I don't know what year, up to 72 Le Mans A bodies. The 69 Chevelle it would fit that it would fit those two cars I believe it's like Buick Skylark sold cutlasses around that year that's what this fits now the factory did have this as an option but it's very rare it's not on very many cars and how you can tell is You can see these two, I'm going to undo it here in a minute. You can see the two holes on the end. Okay, they bolt into, get these cats out of here. These are not holes for it. These are for another purpose. They're not for the sway bar. I do have the measurements to uh, bolt <laughs> from this bolt hole I believe it's 5 inches then 11 inches or is it 11 it might be 11 from there and then 5 more or something like that I'll look it up okay so you gotta drill two holes in here in the bottom these are the bottom lower trailing arms or control arms whatever you want to call them oh, we put yeah we put new air shocks in here too new air shocks coil springs brakes, rear axle seals, a lot of stuff. Change the rear end fluid, U-joints, and you can see the upper, to the adjustable upper control arms. You need them to get the pitch right on the drive shaft. That's a problem I had, the rear end was tilted down. So the way to adjust your rear end yoke up and down is with the upper control arms. Didn't think much about these bottom ones. Now they're probably original and they got two big rubber bushings. One here, one in that bolt hole there. 
Okay, they're probably shot, but you know, you don't really know till you take it apart. Uh, <clears throat> so, from the factory, what they would do, because you can see this, it's two pieces. Well, not two pieces. It, it's, there's nothing in the middle of this, it's hollow. Okay? Uh, so what they would do from the factory is they would have two holes here to mount the sway bar and they would have this bottom boxed now you can still buy these kits to box these control arms but okay so here's here's the deal these bushings here are like 40 to 50 bucks for like moog ones then a 70 or 80 bucks for the kit to box this in so you get a piece of metal and then you have to weld it on both sides. Uh, then you got to drill your holes. Uh, okay, so a lot of people make the mistake. They buy the sway bar, then they take these stock control arms and they just drill two holes in there and mount it. Well, right then they done a lot more damage to the car. Okay, so what happens is when uh, I, I'm going to get the list of uh, what, what it does. It controls the body roll. So when the car is going like this, it keeps it stable or more stable than it would without one. So what happens is when you go into hard curves and stuff, this here will bend and it'll warp it and you'll just be in a whole bunch of trouble. It's gonna put a whole bunch of unnecessary wear on your bushings, you'll lose your bushings, you'll bend this. I, I watched a video with a guy, that's all he done was cut two holes in here, to drill two holes and mount it. Said it's good. No, it's not good. He royally, royally screwed up. Okay, so your options, <clears throat> you got two options. You can do what I said, buy the kit, buy the bushings, take it apart, rebuild it, drill your holes, and put it back in, then mount your spray bar. Or you can buy these uh, tubular, well, you can buy them already boxed, or you can buy tubular ones. Now, the tubular ones are coming tomorrow, but if they go just start this video, I, I, I can't show them to you. So the tubular ones come with the better polyurethane bushings and they're, they're round and they got the holes pre-drilled to mount the sway bar. They're all ready to go, but they're not cheap. Uh, I think they used to be, but they're not anymore. And I bought it from a company called M MSS. Is it Monster? No, it's called Massive. Massive Automotive, MSS, made in USA. I'll show them to you tomorrow when they get here. So, uh, uh, they were $180 for the pair. Okay, let me look at this one too. I don't know if it's any clear. $180 for the pair. The sway bar itself was $160. It was $160 ship, but $8 tax. So it was $168. And then 180 something for the two, so we're we're, we're into it pretty 180 uh, and and 170. So uh, yeah, it's through, what what is that? 360 bucks, 350, 360. But uh, let me go get the uh, let me undo the package and let me get the list of what what it does. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so the sway bar is UMI Performance Incorporated one inch solid chromoly rear sway bar, 160 plus tax, 168. Reduces body roll and understeer, increase cornering abilities, resulting in a more balanced suspension. Keep vehicle level and straight during those hard launches. And he treated, okay? So it's also going to help out with drag racing, keeping it straight. 
Okay, so I didn't undo everything because this thing is just like glued on there. So there's the two holes to the lower control arm. And then it comes, I don't know, I guess uh, instructions, but the bolts. So the bolt would go through, all the way through control arm. Okay, uh, now I don't have the, so I don't have it with me, but from... The trailing, lower trailing arms are, yeah, the company's called Massive MSS. It was one, oh, I got 186. Why don't I got 159 written down? Oh, okay, 159.77 plus 18.72 to ship. Plus tax, come out to 186.48. Okay, they say the stock what I just showed you is flimsy sheet metal. Okay, their product, the strong tubing, uh, har you can harness the highest horsepower with polyethylene, polyethylene bushings, made in USA. Get ready to rock your 60 foot times. Okay, so both these are gonna increase the performance of this car. Now, can you get other stuff? Yes. I watched, I don't know if you guys watch him on uh, Pole Barn Garage. He actually had UMI as a sponsor. He has stickers on all his cars and everything. And he got all his free. And he put them on his 71, 72 Le Mans. So he got the whole kit, front and rear. I think it was... 39 uh, like almost four thousand dollars plus a whole bunch of extra stuff you can go watch it but i bet it's over five grand worth of stuff and it i think it's a lot of it is unnecessary there was a big bar that went across from the top of the coil with the coil mounts up there all the way across I think it mounted to the shocks, and I guess that's to keep the frame from moving. This frame ain't gonna move. I mean, maybe if you got a thousand horsepower or something, but or over that. But I thought that was unnecessary. Then it had two big bars that went. I don't know. It went down from the bottom up into. Oh, I think it went up to the lower control arms in the back bolt there. There was another bar that came, I don't know, he didn't show it real good, but didn't get an idea on his video. I think that's probably all unnecessary. These frames are pretty damn strong. This one's a southern car, you know, maybe it might help you if you're up north and you got a rust, rusted frame, or not a very good frame, and that'll help stiffen it up. But I don't think this frame or anything has a problem. So I think what I got is going to be good enough, coupled with the other stuff I got on here, coupled with the uh, top adjustable ones, and I think it'll be good. So what I'm going to do is, off camera, I'm going to take these out. These have been in there since 68, 55 years now, these bolts. Uh, but we're down south, so they're not, you won't, you know, I get a kick out of watching these northern guys with their torches and their grinders and their, oh, jeez, welding bolts back together and BS. Those are going to come right out of there. I get new bolts, nuts and bolts if I want to, but I can guarantee with an impact on one end and a wrench on the other, they're going to pop out of there. They're going to be a little difficult, and it's going to be a little difficult trying to film it but you know what I mean there's just four bolts two on this one two on that one we're gonna take them out I'm gonna do that off camera and then tomorrow we'll get the new ones line them up make sure they're the same length same everything bolt them in there then bolt the sway bar on there and uh, check out how it looks and everything so that's what this video is about guys uh, like I said, pole barn, 
garage, he got all the stuff I did on the front. The UMI, I don't know if it's an American-made company or not, but uh, he got all the disc brake conversion, the tubular A-frames, uh, all that stuff that I got, and I paid a thousand, just a little over a thousand, thousand and seventy-two or something for all my front end and disc brake conversion and all that, so, you know, it seems to work good. Okay, guys, so, uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. We'll get rolling on her. Okay, guys, next day. Uh, yeah, the bolts came right out, but I changed the rear end over, so I must have had those off before. But even these back ones have been on there 55 years. They just pop right out. Okay, so that's uh, that's what they looked like. And like I said, you can buy the kit. You can weld in the piece right here. Uh, pop out the bushings if you got to press. And these bushings, it really don't look that bad. There's really no slop in them. Uh, you got to watch out when you buy new bushings because some of them Chinese ones will turn to mush after. 50 miles so you got to get some poly polyurethane ones or something something good okay so uh yeah so can you make these work with a sway bar yeah just like i said weld in the thing drill the two holes but it's not real it's not any cheaper to buy the aftermarket tubular ones it's a little bit more but it might be worth it uh less tassel you know less screwing around welding grinding pop trying to pop these out uh i know some of them some you can do pretty easy but you know pressing them in or whatever sometimes can be a real pain in the ass these ones probably not but if you're up north you know, feel sorry for you guys up there, up north there, screwing around with these nuts and bolts and crap from 50 years old. But down here in the south, I don't really come into that problem, really. Uh, I don't even have torches. Most I do is put a little luby dooby on there and pop them out. Okay, so that's them, guys. Uh, left and the right. Could I, could I box these and drill holes and save them for another car probably but will it be worth it i don't know but i'm gonna keep them around how they go for friggin 100 bucks on ebay for a used set oh, it's crazy so yeah like i was saying these didn't have the holes pre-drilled or anything for a sway bar neither did my le mans which is actually a le mans sport buckets console it's just almost a gto why it didn't come with a sway bar kind of or why somebody didn't option for it i don't know but there's no holes drilled in that one the 69 chevelle same thing so it's very rare to get a factory rear sway bar okay yeah that, i unwrapped it so that's it there i i lined it up there uh it is gonna fit so, wherever the holes were, that's what it would do. You drill it through there. And also, the factory uh, boxed ones, they would actually have a brace in here. A brace between here and here. And see, if somebody's putting these on, these factory ones, they don't put the brace in. They don't box them. They just drill a couple of holes and slap it on there. They're in for a world of trouble. But that's how it, basically what it does, guys. That, that and that, right there. Okay, so uh, I'll wait for the uh, new trailing arms. I don't know exactly when they're going to be in today, but right now i got to take a shower, do some running around, get some shit, do some grocery shopping, stuff like that. Hopefully by the time I get back, the parts will be in. Uh, it's going to be 105 degrees today, 104, 5, and 6 all week. Crazy. 
But uh, anyway, yeah, that's way, way above normal. Normal temperature should be about low 90s for this area. So uh, yeah, it's way above, way above normal. But anyway, guys, I'll be back and we'll get this thing together. Check it out. Okay, guys, they just arrived. I just unpacked them. Uh, they came with, they didn't give me a pretty little Slim Jim. <laughs> came with new bolts, everything, some stickers and stuff, but if Massive or UMI are watching, uh, I got a couple other cars I could put these on. If you want to send me some stuff, I'll put on some stickers and so this is a free uh, free ad for these two items. Okay, so here they are here. See, they're solid. Well, it's solid, solid, but uh, very strong tubular, heavy deals. Here's the two holes here for the sway bar. Polyurethane bushings. Let's see if these line up. Yep, those holes will line up. Okay, so I'm going to bolt these two in. And then I'll be back. And we'll bolt up the sway bar itself. Okay, I want to thank... Thomas Benson. He sent me a pair of... Uh, uh, for the Nova... The uh, pillar posts, pillar trim posts. I uh, just needed the passenger side. Been a year and a half. I've been looking for one. So, uh, yeah, thanks. I'm going to sand this down, prime it, paint it, and uh, put it in there. 72 Nova. So, yeah, thanks for that. Okay. So, let me get the two uh, lower trailing arms on, and I'll be back. And then we'll put on the sway bar. Okay guys, there's the lower trailing arms in. So we'll just line up the sway bar to them four holes and uh, put it in and tighten her up. So I'll be back. Okay guys, there it is. Uh, not a very difficult job at all pretty easy actually uh, just as long as you're not up north and battling them bolts but okay so that should be that's a pretty easy performance upgrade not real cheap but uh, that's as cheap as I could find and they seem to be quality components at that so I guess there's no cheap company making them or there's just not making them at the moment you know there's a lot of chinese economies a little bit screwy so they might not still be up after the pandemic okay um i haven't really looked that hard i just seen them when i was looking for these lower those lower trailing arms the the kit to weld on there if anybody knows where they're cheap actually i don't even think i looked at the prices I just was going by one video I watched where a guy said they were seventy dollars and that was like five years ago so I'm guessing 70 80 bucks but if anybody knows uh, so what I might do is get this set ready put new bushings in it put the uh, reinforcement box thing on it drill the holes and get it ready for either my Chevelle I'd probably rather do it on the Le Mans I'd like to do it on both but yeah, eventually we'll probably do it on both them cars too. Uh, I said these cars are all done, but you know, I just like to add extra stuff onto it. So this should improve the handling quite a bit. Um, okay, it's not really for a budget build. If I was doing a budget build, cheapy, I wouldn't be doing that, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I think that's it for this video, guys. Uh, you can get, well, I'm not sure about the sway bar, but the trailing arms. 
they had a bunch of different colors blue yellow black uh, I figured I'd get red because that's what the sway bar was so anyway you can get them in different colors if you want uh, was there anything else I wanted to add I think that was it that Slim Jim was pretty good too okay I think that's it guys uh, hope you learned something I did by researching it at first uh, hopefully that'll get rid of some of the wheel hop if not we'll, we'll go back to the drawing board and see if we can get something else because uh, you know I, I kind of forget what you know ladder bars and stuff like that whether they're for just for leaf springs I think they're just for leaf springs uh, I kind of forget what you had to do with coils well uh, yeah I know anyway we'll get into that when the time comes uh, we've got some more stuff we're going to do to this later on and then uh, we're going to check it out do some burnouts and uh, check over that again okay I think next up guys we're going to do the 76 El Camino uh, either the seats out the Sequoia or the Hyundai Santa Fe and I got new carpet for it we're going to do that among some other things so I'm pretty sure that's going to be next although although I think I'm going to take a trip to Puddin's Fab Shop's uh, Honey Hole where he buys all his cars from I'm not into his the stuff he builds that wagon's okay, but it's not a Chevelle wagon. It's a 61. But most of his cars are those mini trucks and the U-Haul mini trucks. Not into that. But the place he gets them from, D&H Classics or something like that, uh, it's not that far away. I think it's about an hour and a half to two hours away. Uh, it's actually in between me and where Puddin, Puddin's at, Tecumseh. He's a couple hours away. And I think DNH is in Stonewall. So he's about an hour from it, and I'm about an hour and a half, something like that. Anyway, I think I'm going to take a trip up there, guys, because he's done a few walk arounds, and there's some nice cars that he just he doesn't even look at because he's not interested in the old muscle car classic GM. Some of it he is, but he's mostly all gets a hard on over those uh, mini trucks. Um. And no, I'm not going to buy a 64 Impala wagon. I'm not into Impalas or wagons, those wagons. I only like this wagon because it's got, it's the Chevelle and it's the muscle car look. Not really interested in the, the big, the big boats, whether it's an Impala or, you know, those type of big wagons. That's too much like, you know, your daddy old car. Um... But, anyway, uh, we'll get into that. I remember one video, it's been a while back, that Puddin did, and they had a ton of these F-bodies. Camaros, Firebirds, Trans Ams, E-28s. I mean, they were just stacked on top of each other. Can I pick one up for a parts car? How much do they want? Stuff like that. So I think, guys, I'm going to make a trip up there in the next couple of days. I'm pretty sure I will, plus I want to see if I can get all the power steering components for the 72 Nova and convert it to a uh, power steering. I got the power, it came with the power steering box, but I need, I need all the, the pulleys, the, I can get a new pump, new belts, but I mainly need the pulleys and uh, stuff like that. So maybe they got that uh, and a reasonable price. I have no idea what their prices are. Uh, Puddin never mentions what he buys cars for, so he's a little secretive of what he pays for stuff. I'm not, but he is. So anyway, that may be the video coming up next, guys. I might go over there and then maybe I'll buy something. If I do, I might make another video, but uh, of me buying it and you know seeing if it runs you know go go over it type thing but the walk around video is going to be looking at old 
muscle car type not not no mini trucks or anything like that okay so that may be the next video coming up i'm not sure i gotta plan it out it's 105 degrees every day 106 degrees for the next week but if i can get out there when they open like real early in the morning walk around for a couple hours before the blazing sun kills you uh that's how i get a plan it okay guys like i said hope you enjoyed the video learned something nice performance upgrade uh like comment share subscribe all that stuff and we'll see you next video real soon thanks everybody for watching